All right. We're live. Are we on? Yes. <laughs> what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Rock and Fish Show on the Q94.5 Facebook fan page. And we thank you for joining us every Friday. And, uh, well, I'm Rock and Roll James, and she's my daughter, Fish Felicia, over there. What's going on, Felicia? Felicia Marie. I'm doing good. It's Friday. All right. It's uh, Friday. I hope the audio sounds good. Is the audio sounding good? Let us know if you're listening and you're watching, because uh, sometimes we can't really... You know, check in. We don't have headphones for this, but, uh, <laughs> you know, if uh, you hear any discrepancy or anything like that, let us know in the comments and uh, we'll be I'll more than right happy now. to adjust it. Okay, she's going to check it out. Because I am, I do, I like to send shout outs. So I come and I check the comments and I make sure that we're reading them all and we're engaging with everybody. So let me see. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Rock and roll, daddy O. A rock and roll. So I'm sporting this Iron Maiden hoodie that my friend brought me from the Iron Maiden show in Austin, Texas this week. I almost went. I almost I was this he told me about it Friday night. He had an extra ticket. And um he said I said, Well, hey, how much, bro? Maybe I'll go with you, you know? And he goes, uh, just buy me a t shirt. Oh, I, I would have gone. Okay. So it was in Austin. They were gonna drive over there Tuesday. And they did. They drove over there Tuesday. They saw the concert, and they drove back. My brother Joey went with them, another friend named Lloyd Serna and Dan Perez. He's the guy that uh, offered me the the ticket. And I, you know, I was all gun whole Friday. I was like, dude, I'll go. I'll be there. I get off at 1, you know, and we'll take off. He, well, we're taking off about 11. I'm like, oh, man, okay, well, let me see what I can do. Maybe I can ask for Wednesday off. And I started doing all these plans. And right here, ladies and gentlemen, they don't like to hear, uh, you know, can I have this Tuesday off or this Wednesday off? You got to <laughs> get them like the week. Yeah. They want advance notice. And plus, we're in the ratings period. So it was really tough for me to get out. And, you know, I probably could have still come to work, right? Because they got back home at about four in the morning. But, you know, and I've I've come to work with about an hour and a half of sleep. They before. went and they, they drove to the concert and then drove back uh -huh. after the concert. Oh, man, and that's it was, tough. It was like general admission. And, and Joey, my brother, sent me pictures of like Bruce Dickinson right there, oh, you know. I mean, he was like, you, you could get as close to the stage as you wanted, but the place was sold out. It was the Moody Center uh, in Austin. I wish Iron Maiden would come down to the Rio Grande Valley. It'd be something that'd be amazing. They were here back in 1981, 82. That would be. Uh, for the Killers Tour, and that was the last time they ever came. Oh, no, they actually came back, but with another singer. Uh, it was uh, with, um, oh, man, what was it? Somebody out there probably knows. Blaze Bailey. So it was wasn't Bruce Dickinson? No, it was in Bruce Dickinson. It was Blaze Bailey, and I think they played at the Roadhouse in San Benito. Which was oh, like, wow. Yeah, it was San another, Benito. it was like a Iron big Maiden warehouse. Iron Maiden in San Benito? Yeah, it was in San Benito. Wow. So let me show you this, man. This is freaking awesome. Um, Let's see. You got the Ooh. image, right? It was Eddie and Iron Maiden, and then the little button. Check out the little, the little you know, not the button, but the zipper handle. It's got a little, you know little freaking patch on there and then the back and so i was like because i cashed up them some money i said dude bring me something so i have a lot of tour shirts of a lot of concerts that i've never been to folks <laughs> i have friends and i send them money on the cash app and they buy me the shirts and they bring them down so i got a t-shirt also i didn't like the t-shirt the t-shirt is cool but mm -hmm. i don't like the fit you know but yeah still it's iron maiden so it's yeah cool. that's an awesome hoodie and like the winter's coming up, so yeah, can wear it. and it gets cold in here. When I come in here it at six in the morning, I'm like, "Damn, it's freezing in here," you know. And, and if it's humid outside, and I come in and it's freezing, I end up getting sick, and I yeah. don't want to do that. So I always have a hoodie. I'm, I guess I'm just old, like Mister Rogers now, right? Maybe <laughs> I gotta have a sweater, you know. The age is kicking in. Yeah. So, <laughs> what about you, Fish? How's it been going? Uh, good, really good. Oh, and by the way, fish. Oh yeah. Let's, yeah, look. I'm, we're gonna show off woo! our. So she got us a couple of shirts there, and then the, jerseys. What does the back say? The back jerseys. Let's see your back. It says Rock sixty six. Yeah, and uh, when I saw sixty six, I'm like, man, all it needs is one more six, and I'm like, <laughs> forget about it. I didn't know what number to put. I was like, should I do? <laughs> You know, the 94. So she said, I let me just tell, tell everyone how old my dad is. It's right? okay. Mine has my birth year in the back, too. So <laughs> yeah. no worries. But yeah, well, thank you, Fish. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Everything's been good. Um, Just been working and staying busy, honestly. Yeah. I turn next weekend, I'm turning the big 3 0. Uh oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't get any older because that means I'm going to get yeah, older too. Yeah, I'm turning, I'm turning the big 3-0 next Saturday. So I'm kind of just like getting ready for Woo! that party weekend party month at 30 years old i don't know what's a party anymore so uh, hangovers <laughs> hurt more than they used to hangovers last three days <laughs> felicia had to call an ambulance one time she I was did. so hungover that was the funniest thing she called 911 i did, I did. yes 911 can we help you I'm mortally hungover. No, so no, (laughs) no, that's, I was, I woke up. I'm sure it's happened to anybody that's watching. I'm no, sure. I don't think so. No, Nobody's saying, ever called an ambulance for a hangover. I'm saying, I'm saying oh, Bogar said dirty 30. Yes, the dirty 30. That's what I'm turning. Uh, no, so I, I woke up. You know when you go out the night before and you knock out and you pass out and you're like, you're done, you pass out. <laughs> but then like. You just randomly wake up like at eight in the morning and you're like, oh, I feel great. Because you're still drunk. Yeah. Like the adrenaline (laughs) wakes you up and you're like, I feel great. Like my man, no hangover, man. I got lucky, you know. Uh So that's kind of what happened to me. And then I was kind of just lounging around. And then all of a sudden, like I took a little nap. I said, I'm gonna go back to sleep. So I take a little nap when I woke up from that nap. Like, that's where it just hit me like a pile of bricks. Like, it was just like, I started getting like, my hands started tingling and getting like <laughs> numb. And then I started like feeling numb and I thought I was dying. I was mm-hmm. like, this is how I'm going to go. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Like, my body's freaking out. I was by myself at the time at home. So I had nobody there for support. And I was like, <laughs> Jesus, I God, like, <laughs> I promise I'll never <laughs> do it again. And you know what? <laughs> the like, next week, ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so true. <laughs> that is so true. Week, right? I've made a lot of empty promises to myself. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do this anymore. Come You're on, not fish. the only one. We've all done it. It's like, you know better. Why are you still drinking like this? But you no, know, I had to call 911. So I called 911 and the ambulance showed up. And then my friend was passing by. She lived in the neighborhood. She stopped and she gets off. And then my brother shows up and then my mom shows up. I had everybody there. And you should have seen me. I, like, looked terrible like my hair was up i had like mascara smeared like it was it was so embarrassing i was like why did i do this like why did i call them and then they got there and they were like ma'am are you okay like they bring in a stretcher like they bring in the whole thing the paramedics and i'm like I'm okay now. Like, I'm Well, fine. actually, when they were wheeling her, like, you know, putting her on the stretcher and all that, they asked her, do you have anything to say, Felicia? Do you have anything to say? And she said, you're not hardcore <laughs> unless you live hardcore. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yeah, right. you're not hardcore unless you live hardcore. Yeah. Actually, what the ambulance people could have done was just given you an IV vitamin infusion, uh, and that yeah. would have probably cured your hangover right away. That would have brought me back. But that's what um, they do nowadays. But lesson learned: uh, do not drink an excessive amount of wine. You know, oh, that's what it was. It MD was 2020. Ugh. No, it wasn't an MD 2020. <laughs> Thunderbird. No, it Boone's was farm. I had a wine night. It was Strawberry supposed, Hill. All the wine, oh wine. It was supposed to be a chill wine night with a couple of girlfriends. And it turned into a very, very like extreme wine night. Well, I have to say that one of my worst hangovers, probably the worst <laughs> wine. drunk experience <laughs> and hangover that I ever had. It was about 15, 16, and, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, dabbling with that wine, too. It was Thunderbird, and forget about it. I never, I've never, never heard again. of Thunderbird. Never again. Mom took me to church the next day. Yeah, So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, enough of our uh, hangover stories. If you have any, <laughs> put one on, you know, uh, let us yeah, know about it. We want to laugh about you, too, okay? <laughs> And so we're giving away a free IHOP gift card with the, the Rock and Fish poll now. Anything, the best thing for a hangover is a, a stack of pancakes and, you know, yeah. uh, some coffee and uh, some over easy eggs with bacon and hash browns and sausage. Oh, my gosh. Damn. That's a good, that's a good meal for anything. <laughs> and this IHOP <laughs> gift card will definitely uh, provide that for you. So the rock and fish poll is what's the best rock and roll movie? Okay. What's the rest, best rock and roll movie? Well, what is, what is your, I guess we can ask, what is your favorite or what do you, yeah, what do you yeah. think, which movie do you think which is, the, is best? the best? I mean, because there's, there's been a lot of rock and roll movies, and the reason that we're doing this poll is because this week, on Tuesday, September 13th, 
Uh, the movie Almost Famous turned 22 years old. It was released in 2000 in theaters across the U.S. The film is a semi-autobiographical account of writer and director Cameron Crowe's time spent interviewing rock bands for Rolling Stone in the 70s when he was just a teenager. The film centers around a fictional band called Stillwater, which I became a big fan of when I saw the movie. And rather than being based on one band in particular, Stillwater feels like every 70s arena band rolled into one. I especially love the parts when they're backstage in the arena, because I've been back backstage in arenas, uh -huh. and it, it's like it gives you the feel. And the thing about it is I've been in those uh, areas nowadays. Like you live that to time. to have been there in the 70s, I mean, it, it like takes you into the 70s. I, I really love the movie. The band is great. The music that uh, is provided for the movie uh, was produced and written and uh, recorded by Nancy Wilson and Ann Wilson from uh, Heart. They used a lot of different musicians and, of course, a vocalist for the singer. Uh, but I, I highly recommend you see the movie. Um, what's her name? Uh, she comes out on it. Uh, you, you probably you're putting yeah, the picture. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Her mom is also very famous. Her mom's Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn. Yeah. Uh, she Kate, Kate Ka Hudson. Kate Hudson. She reminds me of J Lo a lot. I don't know. Sometimes you when I see so? her face, it's like she she looks a little like J Lo. Yeah, Kate Hudson. But she's I good. I kind of fell in love with her in that movie, man, because she was <laughs> the super. And who does awesome. she play? She plays a groupie, oh. a groupie that gets the guy in well, with the band. Oh, okay. The guy that's the kid that's trying to, re and so you know, it's she becomes, uh, you know, she she realizes she's just a groupie, and uh, there's a, a part. I don't even want to say anything. You got to yeah, see I gotta it. Yeah, I got to watch really it. I've never good. seen it. I really loved it, uh, but it's not. I don't think it's the best rock and roll movie for me. Uh, my favorite rock and roll movie has to be Detroit Rock City because <laughs> that was me when I was a kid in, in the movie. It's about a group of guys that are trying to make it to a Kiss concert and uh, the mom burns the tickets. And it's it's a really a fun, adventurous movie. And it all ends at a Kiss concert. It's really great. I think I could watch that movie over and over again. So that's my favorite. What's your favorite? What do you think is the best fish? Uh, Bogart said his is Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, I haven't seen that. That one's good. I haven't seen that movie. Freddie it's Mercury. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is actually, so the reason I put you're not hardcore unless you live hardcore is because... You're not hardcore unless you live hardcore. <laughs> it has to be School of Rock. Uh -huh. School of Rock is my favorite uh -huh. rock and roll movie. Like and that. I just, it's it's Jack Black and he just, man, it's just him with the kids. Like, it's I thought it was perfect. It was so funny. It was, it had like a, a good storyline to it. And it's just, it was awesome to see them like rocking out and like, you know, playing playing music and then at the end they have like their big concert and stuff and if I'm asked it. what my favorite Jack Black movie is it's gotta be that School one even Rock. though that wrestling movie uh, you know is also one of the yeah. most popular ones on him uh, about him but or with him but I think that's gotta be my favorite Jack Black movie because he plays dude it, it's hilarious he's got my attitude when I was like, <laughs> young like that I, like, like it was he all just about wants to rock. be a rocker and like he's gonna be that's his dream like and yeah. it's so funny like my favorite I have a lot of favorite parts of that movie but my one of my favorite favorite is when he first like goes to the school and it's his first day uh -huh. and like it's a real like you know private school and like real like high class so the the principal leaves and then he's like all right. He's like, who knows what a hangover is? <laughs> and then every, the kids are like, uh, it means you're drunk. And he's like, wrong. It means I was drunk yesterday. <laughs> and, and then some guy, the kid's like, the kid's like, dude, it means you're an alcoholic. You got a disease. And then he like starts fighting with the kid. And then he's like, who has food? And like the little girl had like a sandwich. Like just. You get an A. Yeah. <laughs> an a. Like just, just like a, like any normal, like just rocker dude that just picked up a gig. You know, I love, he just shows up. I love his character because everybody knows a guy like that. I mean, yeah, no, a guy like, dude, it's about the music, dude. It's about yeah. the music. It's nothing else but the music. And then everybody knows the guy, the other guy in the band with a girlfriend like the girlfriend his buddy yeah. had right that was like controlling his life and telling him what are you doing with the band get out of the band it's stupid yeah you know so everybody that's like that dynamic is in so many bands local <laughs> bands and stuff like that you know so I, i'm funny, sure a yeah. lot of us musicians 
that performing bands kind of related to that movie. And a it's lot a as movie well. that I can see over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Like I probably know every like almost every line to that movie. Like, Another favorite just... part of mine is when he's going to the school on his first day in the van, in the van, listening to immigrant song. <laughs> 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 and, it's like, and it's like a, it's like a van, and he opens it. It has like a bunch of like instruments, and just like yeah. like he's a rocker. He's, yeah. he's in a band. You yeah, know? That's all he cares about. He doesn't care about money or anything but like that. I but. love it because, like I said, you know, it's it's it it's able. You're able to see like his passion, and then like how he puts it on the kids. And the kids in the movie, I mean, they're so like their parents are so strict on them and it kind of allows them to kind of open up and express themselves with music and stuff. Yeah. And you know, it actually, there's like school of rocks now. Yeah. Like actual school of McAllen, rocks. There's, there's one here in McAllen. Yeah. So yeah. it's really cool. And like, they're going to actually, they do like, um, uh, showcases. Yeah. And they, and like I saw one at Cine El Rey and all the kids that go and, and get educated about music and singing and all that. Uh, and instrumentation, they perform for their parents and friends and family. They'll and stuff be performing like that. at the. There's gonna have the School of Rock at the festival, right? Yeah, yeah. October first, but Rock and Boots, uh, Mercedes Civic Center with Striper, Rat, Dangerous Toys, Whiskey D, Allied Forces, uh, Sidewinder, and kicking it all off is gonna be the School of Rock. Yeah, and that's, that's gonna, gonna be, be awesome. October first. So you can get the tickets at topboxtickets.com. Make sure to get them. And that way you can check out the show October 1st, okay? So uh, let us know what your uh, favorite uh, movie or rock and roll movie is. And that way, and by the way, that's how we're picking the winner for the IHOP uh, yes. uh, card, okay? Yeah, on Monday we'll pick a winner and uh, you'll win an IHOP card. So Tommy Lee was in the news because he blasted a fan. Again. Uh, and I always <laughs> thought about this. When I took Ronnie to his first Motley Crue concert, uh, there was so much nudity, and Ronnie was still in, like, middle school, I think. And I was like, holy smoke. And they'd come out with, you know, it, it was. And, Rock concerts are kind of known. Well, not like Motley Crue. Motley Crue's well, got that. You know, they've been like that since stuff, the 80s. Yeah. yeah. And and no, but now they were showing like the men's genitals and stuff like that. They were doing stuff like that, even though it was a fake thing. You know what I mean? But uh, so Ronnie had invited one of his buddies, one of his fans and uh, friends. And uh, and I was like, and he ended up going into the military. A good kid. So I was like, I kind of cringed a little bit when that happened. I was like, damn, I didn't expect this. Like, <laughs> like this obvious, right? <laughs> But, you know, it was yeah. a concert. I got two boys. I'm okay. But what if I had two young daughters, you know? Yeah. So Tommy Lee, he, you know, he blasted the fan who criticized. Yeah, I just saw it. So I was on Instagram the other day, and he put the whole the whole news story because mm -hmm. the fan came out, and, you know, the fan was upset, and he was like, you know. Juan Alvarez, he's Pano Yeah, Juan Alvarez. He was, he was upset, and he said, you know, I went to this concert, and Tommy Lee came out, and he was encouraging the crowd to show, you know, their their parts and and he's like i just didn't think you know i saw so much nudity he goes and there's teenagers there there's young kids there he goes and i just didn't think it was wrong it, it was right and tommy tommy lee's argument was like well why are you taking kids to a molly crew concert mm -hmm. i mean you should know better you know we're gonna do what we do we've been doing it for years and we have that reputation and that's just how but it is molly crew knows that their their core audience and fan base is older and they've got kids and they want their kids to experience the show yeah the very first time i saw molly crew was shot at the devil they weren't doing that you know and uh you know, so it just yeah, progressed. A little out there. I think when they got after Ozzy's tour, uh, you know, I think it happened with Girls, Girls, Girls. It started getting a little bit more risky after that album. But, uh, you know, a lot of the 80s rockers are older now. They have grandkids. They have kids. And they want their them to experience what they grew up with. And they didn't really grow up with this much, uh, you know, yeah. nudity and stuff like that at so, rock concerts. So what do you think? Are you – do you think – not that like you're siding with Tommy or you're siding with the fan, but what do you like? What do you think? You think I honestly it's... think it's not necessary. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's unnecessary. They don't need to be doing that. Uh, they've got a, plenty of music. They've got plenty of pyros. They got plenty of you know screens and all that stuff, and plenty of fans. They don't, you know, yeah. their whole life. The, the the way to stay alive in this business and in this world is to keep uh, building new fans, younger fans. So, you know, the longevity of the band can last a lot longer. But, um, you know, I, I think it's unnecessary. 
And it was funny because did you see the video where Tommy Lee said, I'm going to show my weenie to yeah. everybody and all this and that. He gets yeah, up there a little unnecessary. and he opened up his pants and he pulled out a weenie dog. <laughs> it, <laughs> oh, no, I didn't see that. That was but, funny. Yeah, but that was like, funny. Yeah. But it was because of that Instagram post. That I didn't he see did. the actual, like the ending of what he did. <laughs> yeah. So Juan Alvarez attended the crew concert and uh, it was September 7th in San Francisco. And he told ABC 7 Chicago that the incident was especially traumatizing for children who witnessed the naked body parts on the jumbotron he goes minors and everyone was forced to see people nude on the big screen and everyone was doing it around us too it was like sodom and gomorrah it was crazy even the usher he had to pull a guy down from the brick wall because he had his private parts out screaming it was pretty crazy Alvarez, who plans to file a police report with San Francisco police for the indecent exposure, added that he is aware of Crew's past and knows that most Crew fans will brush off the nudity as a regular part of the band's performances. Now, Crew, the Crew, the band isn't doing the indecent exposure. It's They're the- making their fans do it. But So there's no way they can arrest... Yes, they can. Well, for inciting it, probably, right? Okay, yes, because Travis Scott... I don't know if you know who Travis Scott is, the mm-hmm. rapper. He got arrested for after one of his shows that he had. I want to say it was, I want to say it was in Houston years ago. He got arrested because he got he was supposedly inciting a riot. Mm. He was telling the fans and he was encouraging them to jump on the barriers and you know, like go crazy. Yeah, and inciting do this, a riot. Inciting, yeah. So they arrested him and yeah. he got arrested. Well, this isn't so violence; it's nudity. It's, and- but you're in. But but there's. There's ch- there's children and mm-hmm. there's minors around and you're allowing you're encouraging the adults to show themselves in front of these minors and that's indecent exposure like you can't you can't do that in public either way like you know it's a public setting. Well, we'll see what happens so, with these guys. Uh, you know, Tommy Lee instead of saying you know what maybe we should change it up a bit, <laughs> he. Uh, he he went He's on fighting back. Twitter and he said, "Yo, one, I've got a question for you, man. What do you expect to see at a Motley Crue concert, dude? We've been doing this for effing ever. Jesus Christ, you effing puh. I can't say the worst of that word. In the same tweet, Tommy wow. wrote, "The world is too soft, man. Been doing this sh- for this shiznit for years, Juan." Motley Crue concerts aren't PG and never have been for exclamation points. Grow the F up, dude. But then you're look look who's but then it's Tommy Lee saying that who just posted a picture of himself on social media what a few weeks ago. <laughs> like bear. I think he needs to he needs to relax. Dude, okay? just play drums, bro. You don't he need to go to that relax. crazy. But, like, but you know what he did? He got one of those uh, OnlyFans yeah, accounts. Yeah, and you know what? It was probably, it was it's a PR cute. stunt. It was a stunt. He said, I'm going to post this picture of myself, get everybody riled up, and then they're going to have to pay for them now. Uh huh. That's what he's doing. So and he's going to make millions off of it. <laughs> he's going to make there's millions. There's women that make millions off that only fans deal they, they end up quitting their jobs yep it becomes a career it's insane right. and they make an so insane amount of we'll money keep too. you updated on what's going on motley crew's going to continue touring they're going to be touring overseas with uh, in south america i think with def leppard and then they're going to come back and they you know according to vince neal they're going to tour in 2024 and then they're talking about another residency in las vegas so, you know, they'll still yeah. be around. They retired and then unretired, and I don't think they'll ever retire again until, until nah, somebody they're, they're drops or something. probably keep going, yeah. Yeah, like the Rolling Stones. But, but uh, uh, anyway. Really quick, before we move on to the next story, I just want to give a shout-out to everybody that's tuning in. Uh, we have, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me scroll up. Okay, yeah, we've got Dante Pablo Lopez. We have Bo Gar. We've got Clarence Cruz, Rick Mancias, Iris Cantu. Hello. Um, One of our winners, the ticking clocks. The ticking clocks are on. They said, good morning, everybody. They've won in the past with a poll. Good morning, ticking clocks. Thank you guys for so much for tuning in. But speaking, so yeah, speaking of, you know, the 70s, almost <laughs> well, famous. Well, speaking of the 66 on the back of my jersey, <laughs> I missed this speaking by a the year. 60s. Okay, because Felicia put that on my jersey because that's the year I was born. But back uh, this week in 1965, 57 years ago, 1965, Ford offers factory-installed 8-track tape players in its Mustang. And if you see the Mustang, this is one of the most classic models there have ever been or there is for the Mustang. And uh, Thunderbird and Lincoln models as well. This marks the first time 8-track players are widely available. 
so you can only get the tapes in auto parts stores or Ford dealers. The players have a tendency to chew up the tapes, leading to eight-track roadkill as drivers throw the tangled tapes out of their window. They're and, like big cassettes. Yeah, well, I've got some. I used to have some Van Halen eight tracks. I'm gonna show uh, you. Yeah. So show them, and that's exactly for all of you that don't remember or have never heard of the eight track. This was actually um, a type of way to listen to music. It was uh, and it's then like the a floppy disk. Yeah, the cassette came in and just blew it away, you know, but. I used to have an 8-track player. I used to have a stereo with a cassette, 8-track, radio, and record player that my mom bought me. And I had a bunch of great albums that my uncle gave me. But those Van Halen 8-tracks, man, I wore them out. And then we would do 8-track <laughs> surgery. You know, like we'd open it up and sometimes they would eat it up and we'd kind of like... What was inside? Like, was it like a cassette? It was like a round ribbon? circle with a ribbon, just a big old oh, ribbon. And it would go. Wow. And sometimes you'd get, you'd have four, uh, four tracks. It's 8-tracks, right? But it would be... Uh, track one, one side. and then it would go to track two and sometimes the song would fade out on track one and then it would go to chick, chick, click to the next track and it would fade in again where it ended you know and so because it didn't fit oh, wow but um if you if you have one of these at home man you have some classic stuff man it's you like got, really classic stuff on you. yeah that's cool that's so awesome i never I, i've always i've heard of eight tracks right but i never knew like how they worked yeah. i didn't know it was like a cassette that they had like that little spinning thing i'm sure know. if you youtube uh youtube it you could find some people that have them and explain them and stuff like that but it's really interesting music history you know back in the day that's how we were able to hear back music in the, in the car because you didn't have cassette players in the car because then you had because after after eight track back before 65 all you had was radio and then yeah. You couldn't hear records because they had records back in the, it was just vinyl. You couldn't put those in a car. put that in a car. So then they came up with the 8-track. And now you could drive and listen to your favorite jams on the 8-track. And isn't, then it turned yeah. into cassettes and then CD. That's what and I'm now saying. Like, like, isn't it crazy Bluetooth. how we've evolved like 8-tracks mm-hmm. to cassettes to CDs? Mm-hmm. And now cars don't even have CD, oh, CD players. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now it's just all Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. Like, what's going to be the next step? And you just connect your phone to it, and you you hear whatever you want. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Like, what's going to be the next step, right? I wonder. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if you you think you know what could be the next step, let us know, right? Uh, So, also, birthdays this week. uh, We had Neil Peart, who passed away from cancer in 2020. He would have been 70. He's one of the Amazing greatest drummer. rock and roll drummers in the history of rock and roll. And he was one of the three members of Rush. And since he died, there will no longer be Rush. And They might do a special show with a, somebody playing just like Led Zeppelin did with Jason yeah. Bonham, uh, who's John Bonham's son. But uh, it would probably be just a one-time thing. But you never know. Look at Pantera. You know, they're doing a, a tour. Yeah, they're going on tour. With Zach Wilde and Benante on drums and yep. guitar. So you never know. Maybe Rush will do something. It'd be nice. I'd like to go see him. Uh, 1961, born uh, this week on September 13th, Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. He is 61 years old this week. Oh, so. he's still good. He's young. He's yeah, still young. he's on tour. 61, he yeah. just recorded a new album. It's absolutely brutal and excellent. And a lot of people are saying it's probably one of the best albums since, uh, you know, Holy Wars and Hangar 18. Uh, that album was absolutely Dave freaking Mustaine. fast and brutal as well. So that's going to do it for us, folks. Uh, We appreciate you joining us every single Friday in the 10 o'clock hour. And sometimes we'll go 10 minutes, sometimes we'll go 20, and sometimes we'll go 30, uh, depending on what the (laughs) topics are. On our conversations. Yeah, and the the engagement on our social media. But we really would love to ask you from the bottom of our heart to share and uh, like our page and and subscribe and and tell all your friends about it and and you know and if you can record some clips of it with your phone and upload it on your own and just tell people who we are and what we do and you know that's the way we get the word out. And we show. have an Instagram. So right below down here, we've got follow us on Instagram at Rock and Fish Show. You can catch us on there. We like to post clips. We like to post behind the scenes. You'll see some. I posted an old school photo of me and you. Or like when I was little and then to now us working here together. That's so, crazy. Yeah, I like to showcase a lot of stuff and definitely engage with all of y'all. And, you know, thank you so much for everybody that tuned in. We had quite a few quite a few people today, which is awesome. Uh, Cindy Reina just jumped on. Joe Lozano, Cesar Gar. Um, yeah, and just... It's just awesome to be here on Fridays and talk about mm-hmm. you know fun stuff and talk to you all that, yeah. that are watching. My favorite part about it is having you all engage with us. Yeah. And, you know, like Dante Pablo Lopez who told us it was Astro World for the Travis Scott. Yeah. 
uh, and Bogar. Shout out to Danny. Got to say, he's a good friend of ours as well. The ticking clocks. Everybody that joins us. So we do this and we do it consistently because, you know, we uh, know that you expect us to do it now. And that's why we're here. And don't forget, before we leave, the Rock and Fish poll. What is your favorite or what is the best rock and roll movie? Let us know in the comments. And we're picking a winner on Monday and you'll win a $25 IHOP gift card who doesn't like food dude who doesn't like ihop <laughs> you that gift card is gonna come in handy on the weekend yeah. so or during yeah. the week if you go out during the week or you just want to go have a nice breakfast or you just want to go have a lunch whatever you'll have that that gift card that besides you everything's getting so expensive you know it's always nice to have a little something to yeah because everybody loves to go eat out i mean we've been eating out a lot mm -hmm. in the past few decades and uh it just you know that is my more. favorite thing now mm -hmm. my favorite thing is like Gift cards for mm. restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I coffee. would never, like, I was never, like, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I'm not going to use a coupon or, like, oh, I'm not going to. Those are my favorite things now. I will use coupons yeah. and gift cards. So I have gift card. We'll come in at you. Trust me. And we're All right. And we're winner Monday. Thank you for joining us. You all have a beautiful weekend. We'll see you next week.